Why is alternative seafood so attractive? Let me provide you with some figures. In 2019, there were 240 million tons of soybean meal produced worldwide, of which 98% equaling 235 million tons went into formulated feeds for livestock and seafood. This soybean meal, with its high protein content, is perfectly suitable for direct human consumption. If you do the math and assume 300 grams of soybean meal per human per day, you could feed 7 billion people for 112 days per year with just this one crop. And soybean meal only forms about 5% by quantity of global crops that are being harvested, with corn, rice and wheat amounting to more than 10 times as much. By feeding soybean meal to animals, we have calculated, however, you end up using only about one-eighth of the nutrients, and this is already benchmarking against farmed seafood production, which is the most efficient way to produce animal protein compared to other livestock. The reason why this is relevant is because it outlines the potential of alternative seafood, in this case plant-based, that it can have on the sustainability of the global food system. We define alternative seafood as all plant-based and cell-based alternatives. At Hatch, which is an investment firm that has traditionally focused on farm seafood production and technologies around it, we have identified plant-based alternative seafood as the most promising option in the near future with regards to capturing market share from conventional seafood. We think so because of the following advantages. We deem plant-based seafood to be potentially cheaper than conventional seafood as you are taking out an entire layer of the supply chain. So instead of from going to, from plant-based protein to feeds to animals to processing to food, you're going from plant protein directly to processing to food. Secondly, shorter transportation. Right now, soy is being shipped around the world as a feed ingredient and then oftentimes seafood is shipped back around the world again to get to the consumer. Plant-based protein used in alternative seafood directly could go directly from the source to the consumer without any diversion. The third point is potentially longer shelf life and reducing the need for permanent refrigeration, which especially in seafood has vast advantages. And lastly, you could argue that you would end up with a more controllable and predictable production process since you're not dealing with biologically complex systems like animals anymore. So all of this sounds very appealing, but why then have alternative seafood products, especially plant-based ones, not succeeded yet? The answer is simple, taste and texture. Alternative seafood products are often still too far away from imitating fish, shrimp and other seafood accurately. There are some exceptions, like for example the plant-based seafood company that we recently invested in, with an alternative shrimp that in its breaded form is almost impossible to distinguish from real shrimp. However, in general, the majority of alternative seafood that we tested is still a few product generations away from mimicking real seafood. And why is that? It is one, because of a lack of processing technologies for plant-based raw materials targeted specifically to imitate taste and texture of seafood. And two, because of the type of raw materials that until today have been limited to a few plant proteins such as pea, soy, and a few others. Both of these problems are possible to overcome and lots of startups here at this conference are leading the efforts. Broadening the choice of raw materials for alternative seafood is a big opportunity for products from aquaculture and products that have aquaculture as their first target market. So let me mention a few. Firstly, there's microalgae. Companies like Susivi and Kühnler Agrosystems are leading the space to farm microalgae containing high omega-3 oils, proteins and antioxidants in a way that is entirely independent from any conventional system input. They are also able to grow their products in arid areas that have no other purpose and therefore don't contribute to land use change, which is still climate change's most driving factor. So in a world where it is inevitable that CO2 emissions sooner or later become taxed, it is also inevitable that these types of raw materials will become cost-effective very soon. Coming from the ocean and tasting like the ocean, they are prone to become more than just superfoods, but an essential component of human nutrition and especially of alternative seafood. The same counts for macroalgae or seaweeds. Seaweeds have high fiber contents and including them in human foods would contribute to a much healthier nutrition in most Western diets that are usually overdosed on carbs and leading to obesity problems. 
Here it is also the processing methods that need to improve in order to produce seaweed-based products that will please human taste more than they do today and drive customer acceptance. Thirdly, originally conceived to serve as raw materials in aquaculture feeds are single-cell proteins, so bacteria grown in bulk on different substrates via fermentation. Many of these products could also go directly into the human food market as an ingredient for alternative seafood products. The same counts for insect meals from black soldier fly, mealworms and other species that are very protein rich and great human food ingredients only really compromised by market perception problems. Lastly, more sustainable plant-based proteins, for example from barley, grown by a company that we invested in last year called Montana Microbial Products, are grown in temperate regions close to the main western consumer market with a much lower footprint than soy and can be used as feed but also in alternative seafood. As you can see, there's a variety of new raw materials pushing into the food value chain, each of which different in nutritional characteristics and each of them adding one additional tool in the toolbox of each food technologist. Given regulatory hurdles are overcome, and those can be big hurdles at times, there are no limits as to the applications and the alternative seafood sector will benefit from those developments massively. Now what does that mean for an investor like us? Broadly speaking, we look for novel raw materials that, are, that produce nutrients that are price competitive with conventional nutrient sources, but have a much lower environmental footprint. We don't believe in paying sustainability premiums, we believe in investing in raw materials that, that are essential to making alternative seafood the mainstream. At the same time, we are actively looking for novel processing technologies, helping to optimize taste and texture of new and conventional raw materials to make them mimic seafood better and better. We are in the process of developing a center of thought leadership in alternative seafood production and enabling technologies and are looking to build companies that are seeking to close the gap between existing technological capability and what is required to create products that have mass appeal to the average consumers. We will at the same time continue to invest in sustainable aquaculture technologies throughout the whole supply chain as we have done successfully since 2017. With this, I thank you and I hope you have a great time at the Future Food Conference. My name is Carsten Chrome. I'm Managing Partner at Hedge. Please connect with me at any time. Thank you.